Hello, everybody. I am Elizabeth Press, and I am here today with Lior Barak. He is a data professional and a published author. Lior, welcome to the show today. Hi, super I, excited to be here finally. <laughs> yes, yes. So I really love the name of your book, Data is Like a Plate of Hummus. Could you please tell me how that title came to be and a little bit about the book itself? Sure. So I was sitting in a restaurant in Israel in a city named Akko in my favorite hummus place, Hummus Said. And I saw how he managed to simplify his life with creating hummus. He arrives very early in the morning. He turns on the gas. He's cooking his chickpeas. And he's making basically like three dishes you can order from there. Uh, the first one is the regular hummus with the chickpeas that we all know, super tasty and really with very high quality of, of a, a, a product. The second one is the musabacha, which is more of a mix of chickpeas and tahini, super tasty. I love this one and I'm always doing half half. If you're going there ever, so order the half half. And then the third dish that he has is basically hummus and a pita with some pickles that you can take with you and walk around the old uh, Akko city. And I was thinking about how it would have simplified our life if we would have just used the hummus in when we're dealing with data, having less and making sure that whatever we deliver is actually in a very high quality and helping everybody to, to achieve what they need. And this was the, the reason why I actually thought about the title for the book. And this is how it ended up being the name of my book, of my first one. Great, thanks. So you got your master's degree in decision making under uncertainty from the University of Haifa. And I love that degree. And I think it's super important when you're a data leader. Could you? Maybe explain, how did you get from Haifa to being a data leader here in Berlin? So I actually started working in Prague in a, in a startup as a consultant, and I received an invite for a job interview in Berlin. And I was like, oh, that's cool. And I didn't remember really that I applied, but I said, if they reached out, maybe they heard about me, maybe somebody connected us. So I went to the interview and I arrived uh, to Berlin because it was quite easy. It was a bus, uh, a, a very quick bus ride between Prague and, and, and Berlin. And I'm sitting there and all of a sudden I understand that whoever they're interviewing is not me. Uh, <laughs> and the interviewer showing me the CV and asking me, aren't you Leo Barak? And I was like, yes, but this is not my experience. I never studied this in a, a Fry University of Berlin. I never done any of whatever is written in my CV. And actually when I'm realizing it, it's it's a financial analyst and I never done any financial analysis. So I'm not sure I can help you with that. And we had a conversation and we decided anyway to extend an offer and to a different role, which not the financial. And this is how I arrived to Berlin, a completely mistake. <laughs> love it, love it. So, you had mentioned simplicity and um, specifically simplicity of data. Could you uh, a little bit elaborate on how we could get there as data leaders and in our data teams? Sure. So when we're talking about simplicity of data, what we need to remember is that there is some kind of a process that we all go through to, to arrive to a decision making. Uh, and it's basically, we need to be convinced that we are making the right decision at the time that we're making the decision. And also afterwards, we need to convince ourselves that decision was made. So this part that coming from my master's degree, right? So this is one of the things that we understand that's always happening in the human mechanism. I need to be convinced that I'm buying the best TV right now. And after I receive the TV at my house, I still need to be convinced that uh, uh, this is the best TV I had. And one of the biggest problems that we have with data many times is that we're making decisions and then we're realizing maybe the data was wrong or maybe the data was not correct. And it's because we're asking for so many KPIs, for so many measures. And we always think that this extra KPI will be the something that's going to help us to actually 
trust ourselves better. But actually not. It's causing us to doubt even more our decisions and it's just causing more problems down the line. And simplicity, I can add here a small, a small point because I was working as a freelancer with a company in uh, Czech Republic, as I mentioned before. And the manager was always asking for more KPIs because he always wanted to make sure that he is, he is correct. And it arrived to the point where the uh, SEM team and the SEO teams used to arrive to meetings and each time they had some other KPI to show why they're doing a great job. Why the reality was that they st start switching because the other KPI didn't work anymore. It didn't show the great work that they're doing to their view. But in reality, it was reflecting what happened there, right? They didn't convert as they wanted, but they found the KPI that showed that they still do a good job. And this simplicity for me, it's like having one KPI, one set of KPI that you can look at. And it's very similar to the hummus. At the end of the day, when we're talking about hummus, right? It's a cheap, easy to make product. It's chickpeas, it's tahini, it's lemon, it's garlic. It's very, very, very simple. And this is how the KPI should be. Very simple, very strategic. And when you're making it, and let's face it, people who goes, there is a lot of fights, which is the best hummus place in every city existing in the world. Everybody have an opinion. But when hummus is being done correctly, you're going to always see the place fully packed and you're going to see people keep talking about it. And I think this is the important part when talking about data as well. Great. I just knowing a lot of data teams myself and running this community, I get into contact with a lot of companies and I feel like sometimes the data strategies are a bit like spaghetti where people throw a KPI against the wall and they see what sticks. Uh, yes, it's happening quite often, right? So everybody suffers from it. We're going and seeing a lot of companies with tens, if not hundreds of dashboards, views, data sets, and everybody thinks that this is maybe the best uh, uh, way for them to look at data. The reality is that when we're talking about simplicity, when we're talking about how we simplifying our lives in making decisions, we should understand what is the main purpose of the business. Is it to bring users into the platform? Is it to send users out of the platform into a third party? Is it to convert them into an order? And then your life becoming much more simple because you know what you're expecting of the users to do. And you already have the key component for your strategy. You don't need to stick anything on the on the wall because if you didn't convert an order, you didn't convert an order. That that is reality, right? And then you know the 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 what is working and what not. And then you need to ask the why it's not working. And this is either because you brought bad uh, users for marketing, so the landing page is not functioning, or is it actually the product because people are ditching you on your exit terms because they don't find the payment option that they wanted. And I think that this is. This is when we're talking about this simplicity and not trying to, to find the right KPI, but rather understand what is my core business? What am I trying to achieve here? And then why is it working or not working? And answering it with three KPI can simplify your life in a very, very easy way, rather than just running and having this form of, I need more KPIs and I need to stick more stuff. Maybe this time I'm going to find the answer. You will not find the answer. That's the reality. You're just going to create even more mess and even more uncertainty around data. And this is my message usually to manager when I'm talking to them is like, try to simplify. Don't overpopulate. Don't give people the option to bring as many KPIs as they want to a meeting. Because once you're doing that, you're creating a culture where they're always searching for more KPIs to explain why it's working or not. I absolutely love that. So be a little bit more like hummus and a little bit less like spaghetti when it comes to data strategy. With pasta, you can have many different sauces and you can cook it in many different ways, right? At the end of the day, hummus is a very simple dish and it should, yeah, you can add to it if you want, I don't know, a shakshuka, which is tomato sauce, or you can add to it meat as well. But the taste of the hummus is the simplicity of it because you're eating something that has very little ingredient and is very, very tasty and very nutritious for you. And that the same thing goes to the data at the end of the day. So could you share with the audience a couple of habits that have been successful for you? So for me, habits that I I see as most important is to take the technical terms, to take the, 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 the 
compl complex things and try to simplify them. And this is, for example, one of the examples of my book, right? Because I took the data strategy that was a very complex process and I tried to simplify it into something that you don't need to have a chief data officer with you to actually uh, uh, do it. You as a CEO or as a marketing person, you can just open the book, read it and understand how to set up your data strategy. And I think this is this one of the key components. The second part is the ability to actually look at the problem and try to stay pragmatic as much as possible. And I think this is, again, a very important thing coming from the Humus philosophy. When you keep it simple and when you keep it pragmatic, it's easier to actually solve problems and go forward rather than wait for the next thing to come. Okay, thank you. And thank you everybody for listening.